Uh, traders are calling the September jobs report that came out this morning not too hot, not too cold. Sort of Goldilocks September report. The economy did add 156,000 jobs. The unemployment rate ticked up to 5%. It's pretty much considered the sweet spot for the Federal Reserve as it was not strong enough for them to make a November move but might just be right for a December chance, which now stands at 70% probability that we will see a rate hike put in by the Federal Reserve. Let's bring in U.S. Labor Secretary Tom Perez to look at the numbers and the breaking news. Secretary Perez, thank you for joining us. Uh, look, we just saw thank that you. Smithfield Foods sure. uh, is going to shut down for temporary purposes the hog processing mm -hmm. plant. I'm seeing numbers of 10,000 employees who might be affected. Uh, can you give us a sense of what you sure. in D.C. are looking at um, and how this might affect the, the labor numbers come next month? Sure. Well, I'm happy that employers and so many people there are putting their uh, workers first and the community first, and I applaud you for your coverage on this. Uh, our first concern, obviously, is with uh, the here and now and making sure first responders can do their jobs and we'll continue to keep families in our thoughts and prayers. We periodically see short-term disruptions, whether it's the uh, winter storms that were in the Northeast last year or the year before, things of that nature, uh, and we might see a short-term uh, impact, but uh, oftentimes as well, uh, when you're in the rebuilding process, that sometimes results in job creation. But my thoughts right now are with making sure that everybody is safe and sound and uh, that the first responders have the tools to do their jobs. And Absolutely. we're going to continue to keep everyone in their thoughts and prayers. We're looking at live pictures of Savannah, Georgia, uh, Mr. Secretary, and uh, you can see the wind is whipping those palm trees. And, and we look and we, of course, pray for everybody there. Um, people are sure. looking at this jobs number, though. It was a sure. miss. It wasn't the worst miss in the world. But it appears now this oh. is the third month in a row that we've seen a slowdown in the pace of job growth. Uh, th three months is a trend, I, I could call it that. Well, What's at work here? Why are we starting to well, see a slight slowdown here? Well, I wouldn't call it a miss. I mean, you, you've got to look at the entire picture here. We, we see steady job growth and we see steady wage growth and we see steady growth in the quality jobs. Three quarters of these jobs were in three sectors that are really well-paying sectors, uh, um, health care, construction and business and professional services which did the best and when you layer this uh, Liz on top of the report from the Census Bureau of a couple weeks ago that shows uh, the income rising over 5%, the median household income rising over 5% from 2014 to 2015, 3.5 million people lifted out of poverty uh, during that same period. That's the largest uh, one-year drop in the poverty rate since the late 60s, and, and that 5.2% is the largest uh, increase in household median income, well, uh, I think, ever. You know, we, you know, you look at all those fundamentals and you see we continue to make progress. And we still have more work to do. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But when you add up all of these things, first-time claims for unemployment, we've now had 83 weeks in a row under 300,000. And, and that's uh, the longest streak since 1970. So, uh, you know, we, those are, when you look at bellwethers of where the economy is, the economists I speak to, they look at first-time claims for unemployment. They look at the job numbers. Okay. We're looking at but, wages. And, and so, we, you know, we've got a lot of good indicators here. Well, I know you talk to economists. So we, we talk to a lot of people. Sure. We talk to a lot of businesses. And, and it's manufacturing that seems to be a sticking point here. Manufacturing jobs shrunk about 13,000. Uh, look, it's a linchpin yeah. of the election. People are talking about shrinking manufacturing jobs. They blame trade. Trade becomes a topic. What is holding Building up growth in manufacturing. No, well, there are two things right now. I and mean, first of all, it's important to note that we had solid manufacturing growth for the first six years of the Obama administration, the best growth since the mid 90s. And what we've seen over the last year and a half are two factors. Number one, the strong dollar. When you're manufacturing something for export, and so many of our remarkable com companies do just that, uh, a higher dollar makes it harder to sell. And then secondly, the, 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 the more broad global economic downturn. Uh, our economy uh, has been moving well, but the rest of the world uh, hasn't been uh, following suit. And so when you, are, when you have these global headwinds, manufacturing is a, a, a sector that will feel it. And, and okay. so those are the two forces that have really uh, reared their ugly head over the last uh, year or so in the manufacturing context. Secretary, uh, on a busy day, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And we'll keep our, those families and the first responders in our thoughts and prayers. Us too.